Hey guys, welcome to another Cigar Chat, brought to you live on CigarFederation.com, broadcast around the world on the Armed Forces Radio Network. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, Rob from uh, Cigar Federation here with you, uh, out in California. Got the beanie on, my hobo gloves, and I'm ready to go. Uh, Logan's in the supply closet. Logan, how you doing today? Straight chilling, dog. <laughs> what is your? It's it's kind of a thing now. What is your 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 name I, say? It I, says I say I hate Matt Ross with a passion, <laughs> passion of the Christ. Okay, <laughs> Matt he Ross. Screwed is, me on, he screwed me on the football pool, jerk. He's, Matt's one of our uh, our moderators on Cigar Federation and worst uh, one ever. <laughs> we've we've got a football pool going on and. Uh, Logan thought that there were it's it doesn't matter. Uh, we'll move on. We've got uh, <laughs> we've got uh, Brian Chinook uh, joining us from Chinook Sellers. Brian, how you doing today? Hey, doing good, guys. How are you, man? Hey, Rob. Hey, Logan. What's happening? Hey, man. Hey, it's, it's beautiful Thanks. down here in the cave. I don't know if you guys see, but we're we're about uh, sixty feet underground, so it's nice and uh, balmy in here. Yeah, like you got a nice setup down there. Brian's uh, he's coming to us live from Napa, California, which is uh, right up the street from me. Uh, I was hoping to get up there and uh, do the show live from the cave as well, but uh, oh, schedules. Hey, I mean, I, 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 Logan, I literally, I invited him to come over and sit in the wine cave, drink some wine, and hang out with me. But no, he's he's too busy. Yeah, I mean, the schedules didn't I mean, he's really. A, he's really always pr- busy. He's, he's, he's forty he's, minutes away from me. He's forty minutes. I know. I mean, I just you can't trust him. You, you, you can't really can't. Him. You can't trust a guy like me. I mean, look at. I got the hobo gloves, and I'm ready to like pick your pocket or something. Who knows? But um, thank you. Um, no, I do appreciate the uh, invitation, Brian, and I will take you up on it at some point. But um, anyway, it looks like you've got uh, a much more comfortable setup than I do. Um, but it's like I said, it's it's California, dude. We don't get real weather out here. It's probably 55 degrees, and I'm complaining about it. So um, <clears throat> anyway, let's uh, let's just jump right in. We've got a bunch of questions to get to. Got some giveaways and stuff as usual. So. Um, Brian, why don't you go ahead and uh, give everybody a little bit of background on yourself? I mean, you're, you're you're in the wine industry, you're in cigars, so uh, give everybody a little bit of background how you got involved in the industry. Sure, sure. But uh, I, no, in, our, in our contract, didn't we agree that we're going to have uh, food service? <laughs> I, it, um, I don't know. Did we? <laughs> we should have, man. I'm starving. Well, we, we talked about makeup too. I didn't. The, the hairstylist hadn't shown. The makeup hasn't shown. I mean, you, you can. Uh, this, we'll, uh, this, this is all you're gonna get, guys. This is it right here. Okay. I mean, we I didn't this fulfill. Was a high dollar show. I thought we were really, uh, you know, putting out some bucks here. I love it. He's, uh, he's, obviously, he's, my contract. Is well, well, it will, uh, well, you'll have to call our lawyer. Yeah, I'll do that. <laughs> well, thanks for having me on the show, guys. Uh, like I said, guys, we're uh, about 60 feet underground in my cave here in Napa Valley. Uh, so if you're out this way, please come on by. I'd love to have you come visit and uh, try some great wines and smoke some great cigars. But uh, we, uh, we got started in the cigar industry about uh, five years ago. Uh, that was a wonderful uh, transition from the, kind of from the wine industry. I've been in the wine business for about 37 years, uh, making wonderful wine in, uh, in beautiful Texas, Logan, uh, up, in, uh, up in North Texas area. Yeah. Uh, you're down there in the, the Austin area. It's, it's, it's a good, great place. Used to get grapes from down there. I'm a... Uh, Old uh, Texas Tech grad, and actually started making wine out in Lubbock, Texas. Uh, Dude, college. Red Raider, baby. That's what my Red wife is. Uh-huh. She'd love you. Mm. That Raider rash, baby. Nothing yeah. like it. So that's where I got the bug for making wine, and uh, 37 years later, I'm here in Napa Valley doing this, doing that. And uh, five years ago, I uh, had a wonderful visit down to uh, uh, the, uh, the Fuente factory and, uh, and also down into uh, Bonal, where the uh, Chateau Fuente is. And uh, my good buddy, uh, Curly Fuente took me on a tour, and I fell in love with the cigar industry about uh, six years ago. And he's the one that actually gave me the catalyst to get going in this business. Uh, he really gave me uh, the passion. His passion for uh, making the cigars was you know, a family business. It was just a, a wonderful uh, experience just being down there and, and filling the, uh, the, the family the, the charm and the biz, the family business, and just get really getting into it, and the, the culture, the Cuban culture, the Dominican culture, and I actually just fell in love with it. And uh, I told, actually, Carlito said, "Hey, Brian, I want to make a wine with you sometime." And so I said, "Carlito, I want to make a cigar with you." And uh, he said, "Man, just follow your passion and do it." And uh, I found a wonderful factory in uh, Little Havana in Miami, uh, El Titan de Bronze, 
uh, where uh, Willie Herrera started his career. Now he's off with uh, Jonathan Drew, obviously making his great cigars, doing a wonderful job. And uh, Willie blended my very first cigar for me. Uh, and so that's how we got started. We did that about five years ago and uh, took off since. It's been great. Great ride. Fun and yeah. Yeah, that's a uh, El Titan de Bronze is a it's a popular factory. So when uh you know that's for for guys like us and you know guys who are in the into some of the boutique cigars and you hear that factory it kind of perks your ears up a little bit. Um, how did you get uh, set up with those guys? How did that uh, how did that come to come to happen? Oh yeah, we well we were we were down there. My wife and I were uh, visiting Miami and Galeocho area, just kind of visiting around the the cigar shops and. Uh, in the area of visiting Papine, and uh, I walked into uh, El Titan and fell in love with the place, fell in love with Sandy Copas, who's the owner. Uh, she's a, a wonderful spirit in the cigar industry. Uh, she works her tail off. She's there uh, seven days a week, and uh, they've got a very small factory. It's only a, a one building bay, and it's uh, uh, at that time there was only three or four rollers at the time when I started, and now there's about uh, ten rollers in the factory in the same exact space, so it's uh, very tight. The, the humidor is there. The aging room is there, the tobacco room is there, the office is there, the retail shop is there, and they've got 10 rollers rolled in this factory uh, in, in uh, Little Havana. It's an incredible place. If you're ever down there, uh, Galeocho and uh, 11th Avenue, it is a, you, once you walk into place, Sandy will treat you like you're part of the family and you'll have the most incredible time there. So I encourage you guys to come down there and check it out. It's great. It's a wonderful place. They're making incredible cigars. Uh, the La Polina uh, cigars made down there. Uh, I just got number one, I think, in uh, Cigar and Spirits, so they're doing really well, and uh, a lot of other great lines. A lot of my buddies are down there making great cigars, and uh, Willie was really nice and uh, helped me out making cigars, and Jonathan Drew said, hey, Brian, not a problem. If you need help with uh, with Willie make some other blends, go ahead and use him, so uh, that worked out great, and he's continued to help me out and make another blend, so we're doing great with it. Oh wow, that's really cool. So you're still working with Willie? That's uh... yeah, well, sure. We're good, we're good friends. So I don't know if you know, but Willie is uh, the son-in-law to Sandy. Sandy Copas, the owner of El Tito de Bronze. Uh, so actually, Willie married into the family. Uh, he yeah. married her daughter. Uh, that's yeah. how he got into the business. And uh, uh, he was helping out in the factory, learning to roll, and became really passionate about it, and started doing his own blends. Created some great scars for El uh, Tito, and uh, uh, then Jonathan Drew wanted wanted him bad. So uh, you stole him away from us, but uh, you know Willie's doing a great job now. He's having a great time in in uh, Esteli. Well, uh, Jonathan Drew is kind of like uh, like George Steinbrenner. He just goes and he 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 plucks all the uh, all the talent. He kind of <laughs> is. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, well George may he rest, but uh, he put together some good baseball teams. I'll tell you that. So yeah, I can. We'll, we won't get off on that topic because I'll start talking about baseball and then everybody will fall no, asleep. So. <clears throat> So we'll keep moving on. So, um, so you've been doing this for a few years. You've got you have three different blends now. Yeah, we should. Um, do. Now the ones uh, I, uh, you're, I'm going to need some help with the names. I know the the newest one is the Pressois, right? Okay. Let you, me now. Let that. me try. Oh, let's let's Let me see. Try. Okay, this is going to be fun. Go. Well, I just told you with the Terry part. War. Terry War. Not even a, not even close. Logan. Terry Gar. Ter Terrier. That's a dog. Terry Gar. Terrior. It's Prairie Terroir. Is that like French? It's French. Yeah. It's French. Okay. That's so, fancy. That's some fancy ish, man. That's fancy. <laughs> uh, okay, so it's. Go ahead. Yeah, so, you know, so we did not come across and, and want to do uh, French names for cigars. It just kind of really happened to the, into the. And what we were trying to do. We were actually trying to create. Synonymous between the cigar industry and the wine industry. We wanted to bring, in my mind, I wanted to bring the two closer together. Together, I wanted to bring some of the technology that we use in the uh, the wine business into the cigar business, and vice versa. So everything that I do has a wine and and cigar theme to it. So you'll notice everything that I do. Uh, our very first uh, blend was called our uh, Private Reserve Estate. Uh, uh, if you look on our wine bottle, which I have right here. Uh, there we go. It's a beautiful big bottle there, so it's uh, it's empty, but we, we drank it last night. It's all gone. Uh, <laughs> but it says, you know, private reserve on the bottle, uh, Napa Valley, and that's what I use some of the, some of the graphics from that bottle. If you notice, uh, here's the, uh, 
the new was that was the 2000. This is the uh, 2009 label, a little bit different. I don't know if you guys see that. Okay. Oh yeah. Uh, but if you notice this graphic up here, you'll see that appear on all of our our labels. That is our uh, our logo, our, our icon for the winery and also for the cigar business. Uh, but we use the the term private reserved um, because that's a it's a term that's used in the wine business. So we called our our first cigar that Willie blended our private reserve estate. And I just happen to have one right here. And it comes in this beautiful 10 pack. You guys can see that. And let's see. If you take out all the stuff, let's see what we got in here. And you got a, a beautiful terroir estate. Let me pull that out of the rack for you. And that's a, let me see that, okay. A beautiful terroir estate. So it's got some of the same graphics you know from the wine bottle. Mm -hmm. took, that in, took that into the, uh, the label uh, or the band and created a, a wonderful blend. So this is what we actually launched Chinook Silvers with. This was the, the very first scar that we did. Okay. Uh, and that was about uh, that was over about five years ago right now. So we've been in that business with this one for about five years. Uh, and then how we came up with the names is kind of a fun story. We uh, have a favorite, a uh, really uh, our favorite. Uh, restaurant here in Napa Valley. It's called uh, Don Giovanni's and we'd love to sit at the bar there and when you sit at a bar you start talking to people and you come up with great names. So I just opened up the bar and said, listen, we need a new name for my new cigar. We're going to make this cigar incredible. I'm going to, we're going to blend it with Willie. I need, uh, we're going to put an incredible pewter metal band on this cigar. This thing's going to be high end. I need a name that is, fits with this cigar and the, the elegance it's, it's going to have. And we started throwing out all kinds of names. But we wanted a wine name. And most wine names, unfortunately, are, have a French derivation to them or some sort. And we started thinking about all these great names, and I, you know, I'd be Googling them online to see if there's something's been taken. And all the good ones were taken. <laughs> and we came up, and I said, uh, I told actually my wife said, uh, why don't we talk about the earth, where the grapes come from, where the cigars come from, where the tobacco comes from, where, you know, where, where do they come from? What, what's common in that? She said, it's from the earth. And the bartender across the, the bar said, Terroir. That's what it is. It's, it's all about the earth. And uh, I went, that's a phenomenal name. So I got up on, online and instantly and I, I Googled it and see if there's anything cigar, terroir, terroir, cigar. Anybody had it already. And uh, literally, we left the bar that night. We left that bar right then. Didn't even pay our bill. We ran out. I ran home and I uh, uh, literally launched that cigar that night. I said, Chinook Soda launches terroir. It, just to get the name out there to get uh, you know some some press uh, you know in, on the internet and uh, started getting that follow and then we actually started blending the cigar. Uh, <laughs> so you launched it before you blended it. I like we, it. Basically, I, I wanted that name so bad I didn't want anybody to take that name. So we we actually <laughs> pre-launched it about uh, about nine months before we had the blend done. We actually started blending it early, and but we didn't have the, the blend done. I didn't even have the band done. I didn't have the band concept of how we were going to do it. Uh, we we worked on that uh, pewter metal band. I hope you everybody's seen that band before, but I'll uh, I'll pull one out here. This is uh this is a terroir. So this is the second second line that we launched. I don't know if you'll be able to see that, but it's got this beautiful pewter metal band on that cigar, and it's put on just like the put on a, a regular paper band, uh, but it's a real thin pewter tin combo, uh, and this band is uh, made. Uh, I'll say overseas, I'm not going to tell you exactly where, but it's, I'll tell you it's not in the Orient. Okay, so this is a very Fair expensive enough. band. I'll just tell you it's very expensive. Uh, and it's a beautiful, elegant band. Uh, the band's actually designed, designed to be uh, to be slid off. So you guys out there, don't, un don't unwrap this thing, don't unpeel it. Hey, designed that's false marketing. That thing is impossible to get off. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know how many cigars I've destroyed of yours trying to rip that band off. <laughs> well, it's I tough. Think Look right there, not a problem. <laughs> so hey, yeah, we, we got we the good one. I think there was a blogger that uh, it was on your on your post, I guess this week, and uh, he had one of the original from two years ago. I think Logan, did you give it to him? I uh, might somebody, have. It was Dustin. I don't know if Dustin. I gave it. To, yeah, did I Dustin. give it to him. I might I think, have. I think you gave it to him, but I he had have. one of the original terroirs. So if you have, a, if you see a terroir with a very dark, this is a very shiny pewter band. If you see one that's uh, was is dark. That is a over two-year-old cigar. That was one of the originals, one, ones that we did. That had that we we were still toying or uh, doing the technology with the band design, and so it wouldn't chafe the the wrapper, wouldn't wouldn't stick to the wrapper. We fixed that problem with the new band design, 
So if you have some of the old, older cigars with a very dark band on it, it's a great cigar because it's, it's, it's I mean, it's been aged for two years now. It's, it's a wonderful cigar. It's smoking incredibly. Like Dust, Dustin, I think he said it's his new number one cigar. He loves that cigar. Uh, but it, it may have a problem with sticking to the wrapper. And I apologize for that, guys. Uh, there was uh, 3,000 of those made on the first run. And uh, hopefully that won't be a problem again. But right now it's a, a beautiful slide-off band, and that's the way it's designed to come off. So anyway, uh, if you see a dark one, smoke it. Just be careful with the band. It, it may or may not stick, so I apologize for that. You know, nothing's perfect. Yeah, I mean, what you're talking, that's... I mean, when you're, years, when you're, when you're, you're out there making uh, technology challenges, you know, you're, you're on the bleeding edge of high-end technology here. You know, this is, uh, you know, something that's different and unique, so... Uh, it was fun. Anyway, we, we had a good time with it, and that's, that took almost two years to get that design like that, so... Um, on, on, that note, on that note, we got to do a quick little station break. Logan, go ahead. Hey, everyone. You're listening to Cigar Chat, broadcast worldwide on Armed Forces Radio Network and on iTunes under Cigar Federation. This little break is brought to you by Ammo Doors, probably the coolest <laughs> thing you've never heard of. It's 100% made in the U.S., a humidor, which actually uses sur surplus ammo cans. Some of them, believe it or not, actually made it from World War II and can be used. It comes in a variety of sizes, 30 cals all the way up to 50 cals. For those military people listening on AFRN right now, go to ammodors.com. Use to get a 10% discount using the coupon code HERO. I just should be like, I can be your hero, baby. That's what I was. That's what I would sing. But anyways, Amadors, they're sweet. Check them out, A-M-M-M-O-D-O-R-S dot com. Back to you, Robert. <laughs> Thanks, Logan. You're welcome. Um, this is a paid political announcement. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Hey, yeah. he loved the read last week, and I just went in there and zinged it, and he loved it. You did. You, you, you zinged it. That was good. Um, All right, guys. Hey, I'm out of wine. So go here, ahead. We're going, we're going mobile. We'll see what happens. All right, so follow <laughs> me. Okay? We're going we're gonna to do a little tour, so here we go. All right. All right. Stay, stay with me now, because I'm, I'm getting thirsty. And you know. are those barrels full? Oh yeah, they're all full. So everybody can see that, okay? We're gonna, we're gonna take a little run over here. Okay, I'm gonna set you down right here. Did you ever make shine? No, nah, never did. No. Oh. You guys see me okay? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Let me back it up a little bit here. Are those candles on each one of the barrels? Yeah, they are. Yeah, we put. Uh, they're little electronic candles. Well, that one didn't work. Uh, yeah, we, uh, yeah, you see that? Oh, oh, mood lighting, I like it. Fancy. We turn them on when uh, we're doing wine tastings in here so that you know which barrel you're tasting. So everybody start, is, uh, you know, hanging out here doing doing wine tastings. They don't know which barrel you're into. So you, you light up the light and say, well, we'll go into that one. So that's what we're doing. But, uh, let me pop this bung off here. All right, so I'm going to give the viewers out there this device. If you can tell me what this device is. I'll let Logan or whoever, or, uh, uh, Rob, if you're taking notes and you're taking uh, live, uh, the first one that tells me what this is, I'm going to give him a box of uh, press was. Wow. <laughs> tell me what this is. I don't know what it is. The first one that gets it. I know the answer, but I won't answer right now because I actually knew I used to make homemade wine and used to Are get the proof up to about 25%. And needless to say, I got real drunk one night and locked my wife out of the house, and it was just bad news bears. So at least say I don't do that anymore. <laughs> so, so you know what that thing's called? I do, and I don't want to say it out loud. It's called. Oh, okay. It's called well, a, a no, W to, something. A W oh. something. Somebody's got to put it in the uh, in the chat room on the site. There, so when, as soon as we get somebody. Uh... <laughs> no shooter. It's not I even done. Out the barrel, so hang on a second. It's not. A, it's not. A, oh, somebody said the first part of it correct. Yep. Oh, Clayton A. Denton. It is a wine oh. thief. Clayton Denton, my buddy. Oh, hey Clayton, how you doing out there, man? I knew the answer to that. It, what do I win? It's a, a, a box of uh, Pressoir. Dude, that's choice. the biggest wine glass ever. <laughs> <laughs> do you see that thing? Yeah. <laughs> so, okay, how many? Now, with that wine glass, that's gonna fit what? Two two gallons? Yeah, it's about two gallons. <laughs> I just to make sure I had enough for the for the show. I, I, maybe a little bit more, you guys think? What do you think? I I need to get one of those for my wife. Well, let's go a little bit more. All right. There you go. You could put a baby in there. I think that would be frowned upon, Logan. Nah, yeah, probably okay. right. I feel better now, guys. I feel much better. All right, you're. Uh, you're uh, yeah. well, I guess we could take a tour, couldn't we? Uh, sure. 
I got, sure. I think I got, uh, you know, got my wine here. Let me, uh, let me go put this down. <laughs> yeah, don't, don't drink and drive. All right, we'll uh, take a little tour around the cave. So, uh, so this this would be this would, this would be sort of like. Uh, I remember back in the, the 60s when uh, Jackie O did the tour of the White House. So that's like, and now the Lincoln bedroom is over here. I, I don't uh, remember it, but I've seen, I've well, seen the even, footage. Dude, dude, you weren't even born then. <laughs> no, dude. So, I think it was back in uh, 61 or yeah, 62. Anyway, she took a tour of the White House and uh, after they, uh, I guess, did it. So they, they took them on a tour of the Lincoln bedroom. So here's the Lincoln bedroom. Uh, this is the, uh, the goddess of, of wine. And, and she obviously lost her head, so I don't know if everybody can see that or not, but that's the, the goddess of wine. Uh, but anyway, we've got uh, some lot, wonderful barrels in here. This is just a small sample of what we got, but we've got a little bit of uh, everything that we make uh, in the cave here uh, for viewing. So, now, How long have you guys that? been making wine? In, including today? Yes. About three days, yeah. About <laughs> Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's been no. It's been a long time, man. It's, uh, I think I said uh, 37, 37 years. years. Oh wow. Was paying attention. I don't know. I was lighting up at the beginning, and I was. I, oh, I got my wine. Hang on. I'll be right back. Yeah. Both both of my lighters ran out of uh, ran out of juice at the same time, but luckily, I got I got fired up, so that's good. So, yeah. so did you tell who's watching this thing? Who, What's that? You you have a, like a, a a post to who's actually logged in? Yeah, a couple yeah, hundred people. Yeah, we've got uh, we've got uh, interactive viewers on our site. There's a couple other places that they can see. It. Apparently, <laughs> that is Lock a gigantic story. glass of wine. That's awesome. Hey, for those of you guys who who can't see it, uh, it's it's you you probably could fit three gallons of wine in there. Four. I'm going at least two and a half. Yeah. So yeah. it's it's a it's a, a comically oversized glass. Well, I know we can't like we can't cuss on the show here, but I would call it a a BFB. Okay. Uh, well, it's a BFG. Yeah, right? there you go. Yeah. Big freaking glass. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So <laughs> anyway, that's why I'm going to roll tonight because we're going to party like 1999. <laughs> All right. Logan doesn't even know what that means. Dude, I was like 12 years old then. <laughs> All right, so let's uh, let's jump into some of these questions. We haven't even, well, you know what? Let's talk about the cigars first, because we kind of we, we wait, talked wait, about wait, we didn't finish we didn't talk about we haven't talked about the press wall yet. Press we didn't talk about the press here, pressy. Well, yeah, so all right, so Logan, try this one. It's press wall, pressy wall. No, 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 terra wall, press wall. All right, so, all right, so you gotta be what's he doing with all these? What, what's he doing with all these crazy cigar names? I mean, he's like exactly. He's going, he's going French on us, like. Who who does that? Trust me, this was not this was not by design. I don't want to create cigars with French names. It just happened that way. So we started with Terroir because it is a very it's a wine name. We use it in the wine industry all the time. It talks about where on the earth you're growing tobacco. It actually means in French. It translates loosely to a place of being on the earth. Uh, so 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 wine grapes have a Terroir where they're grown creates a different wine. Uh, you can have the same exact grape. Put them in different areas in the uh, in the Napa Valley, and if you're on the hill, the, the valley floor, or, or up on the top of the mountain, depending on which side of the mountain, which part of the valley floor, what kind of soils on the valley floor, they all have a different terroir. So that's what terroir means. It means a place of being on the earth, and it creates a different flavor in the wine. That's why you have Appalachians in Napa Valley. You've got the Stag's Leap District. You've got uh, Oak Knoll. You've got all these different districts that are around because they all have a different terroir. And that's why they're labeled that way. So you can, if you like a certain region that's got a wonderful terroir, uh, that's what you, you know, you would go for. You would stick with. So some people like Stag Sleep. Some people like, you know, the Old Knoll, the uh, uh, the, the Rough River Bench area. And they're all different. That same thing happens with with uh, cigar tobacco. The same thing happens with cigar tobacco. In say in Esteli, you've got you've got hillsides, you've got on the mountains, you've got the valley floor. All those tobaccos are different. They all have a different flavor depending on where they're coming from. In different regions in Nicaragua, different re regions in, in uh, Honduras, different regions in Dominican, different regions in Cuba, all have a different terroir. And so I thought that was a perfect name for this cigar. That's why I, I literally, when we said, it looked like nobody had it, we ran out of the, the bar, we forgot to pay our tab, and we, we went home to get, get that name because that was perfect for this, you know, this wonderful banded, metal banded cigar. And then... I'm uh, about about a year ago. 
yes, about a year ago now. I'm uh, I'm in Dallas. I'm driving with my buddy, who is actually a, a French guy. He's got a, a very strong French accent. And I said, I said, I said, Emmanuel, what would you call the press that you actually press wine with? He goes, that's the press what? <laughs> And I went, what? He goes, that is the pressoir. I said, all right, what would you call the device that you actually press cigars with, you know, in the, in the molds? He goes, you American swine, that's pressoir, of course. I'm like, pressoir? I mean, like, terroir? He goes, oui, terroir, pressoir. It's the same, sounds the same, yeah, see, but not the, not the same, same. I went... I literally, I'm, I'm, I'm driving the car, I hit my brakes, I pull to the side, I literally stop on the highway in, uh, if you know Dallas area, just around the airport. Uh, I do. Uh, the South Lake area. I literally yep. am on, on the highway on 14. I pull off on the highway, I pull out my, my, my iPhone, and I'm going, Chinook Cellar launches Presswa. <laughs> we didn't even have a cigar even started yet. And that's how that one got started. I said, that is a perfect name for this cigar. So... I've always wanted to do a box press cigar. I'm not a I'm not a fan of box press cigars because I don't like tactically to hold them. Uh, but I love the look and the style of a, a wonderful box press cigar. So we uh, uh, I decided you know it's 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 time to do that and kind of branch out from uh, our more uh, Habano uh, color and style of uh, of wrappers uh, and go to something that is uh, dark and Maduro. So we wanted to do uh, a wonderful blend with that and on this one we actually went down to my good friends in, uh, in Honduras to make this cigar. Um, John Gonzalez who used to be with my father, he was the uh, natural, national sales manager for uh, my father's cigars, uh, is actually now running the fact or running the, the national sales for uh, the Coots factory which is also down in uh, Honduras and they're making some nice cigars down there but that was actually their very first client. So John called me and said, Brian come down, come to our, our factory opening come see our, our, our brand new state-of-the-art factory in, in Honduras and uh, I went down there with him and had a, a wonderful visit, met the, uh, the master blender, the master rollers uh, and had a, just a wonderful time. I said, listen, if you can dedicate two people to roll my cigar, I will, I will I'll make a cigar here with you. And we started blending. I, I made about three or four trips down to, uh, to Honduras to blend the cigar and uh, it came out wonderful. We, this was uh, version. Let's see. It was version nine when we finished. Uh, by the time we got it all done, we changed wrappers three times. We changed binder filler at least four or five times to finally get this. I what I told told them I wanted. I wanted something that was totally unique and different from whatever I did before. This was going to be very big chocolate and cocoa, coffee, nut and cream. That was the, the four things I wanted in this, the cigar. I wanted chocolate, I wanted coffee, I wanted nut, and I wanted cream. And that's what we try to do with this. We went actually at the very last minute to get the big chocolate fla flavor, we actually went and uh, made this into a San Andreas wrapper for the cigar. And it is every bit of chocolate, nut, cream, and just big, big coffee. Uh, so if you haven't had one of these yet, try it. It's, uh, the bloggers are already hitting with 93 ratings. We're going to be start sending these out to the magazines and start getting raised for those. Uh, there's a lot of people that really love the cigar. It was a, it was a hit. We launched this uh, November 5th, 15th uh, at Telford Cigar. If they're out there tonight, Susan and Brian, thanks for much for uh, hosting the launch of Press Wa. And we did a, a launch with them. It was uh, back on November 15th. Had a great time. Had a good, uh, good group come out and uh, see us. And... Uh, it, uh, it's been a hit since, so uh, if you find Pressois in your local uh, brick and mortar, please pick one up and try it. So it's a wonderful cigar. We're going to bring these out tonight, or this week, right? We're, uh, this yeah, week. <clears throat> yeah. Week. We've uh, <laughs> on that note, we've uh, well let everybody know that you're listening to uh, Cigar Chat, uh, brought to you live on CigarFederation.com, broadcast around the world on the Armed Forces Radio Network. We're here with uh, Brian Chinook from Chinook Sellers, talking Ooh. about. We uh, Oh, oh. oh <laughs> <that's> <laughs> weird. oh. Am I saying your name right? It's no. Like, it's yeah, Chinook, right? Yeah, okay. yeah, like yeah. the salmon, dude. You actually uh, didn't mess it up, and that was pretty good. I was. Oh, well, thank you, awesome. thank you. Yeah. Uh, we're, we're talking about uh, a little bit of everything. We're talking about wine. We're talking about the terroir and the pressoir. Uh, I'm actually smoking the pressoir right now. About uh, there you go. About halfway through. No, right. not quite halfway through. What do you uh, think? And um, 
you, you, the profile you guys are going for, you nailed it. Um, but we'll, we'll get back to that in a second. This uh, next segment is brought to you by uh, Cigar Federation Store, obviously. Uh, we've got um, the self-professed uh, best cigar of the month club on the face of the earth and the universe, you know, however however far you want to go with it. Um, and, on the, and we're on the interwebs as well. Uh, the, the January lineup is out. La Polina Goldie, uh, number five, uh, Black Label Trading Company Salvation, Headley Grange, uh, Casa Fernandez, Aganor Salif Maduro, and the brand new Ezra Zion FHK, all included. Go to uh, store.cigarfederation.com by now. Um, <clears throat> so we'll get back to this pressoir. Yeah, you guys nailed it on the profile. Um, big chocolate notes, uh, big coffee. Uh, the, the nuttiness for me kind of comes and goes. Um, yeah, it's, it's exactly what it does. Yeah, yeah I mean, it's, the, it's the creaminess, the creamy texture that... I, it sometimes just that really does it for me. If I've got a nice creamy texture and I got some sweet notes in there, that's right in my wheelhouse. And this is probably and there's a little bit of spice on this one too. Um, this is probably more a Logan Speed cigar than it is my speed, but I really do like the creaminess of the texture. Uh, the balance of the flavors is nice. Um, the construction's great. I mean, I just used I just did a quick little punch because uh, I didn't have my cutter with me. The draw is great. Um, Definitely no issues with it. Um, so yeah, and I know Logan, you've you've smoked this one before, and I know that you really liked it. What are your thoughts? I thought it tasted like red wine. <laughs> yeah, that was that's what we decided to put in there. Red you wine. just you just poured I, some I on each one. It tasted it tasted like red wine. I don't really like red wine, but it was just kind of grapey and fruity. I mean, it, I get definitely got the creamy, but it was just I don't know, man. It I guess my palate's all screwed up. Thanks for letting everyone know, Brian. <laughs> <laughs> You gotta, you gotta get off that Texas beer. That stuff's whacking you up. Hey man, <laughs> no, don't be talking about no Shiner or no Ziggenbach. Now I, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna words. try to Logan. I'm gonna try to pull you back in, uh, and try to. Good luck with that. Yeah. Have fun. Have fun. And, and I think what I can see what you mean by when you say that it, it would remind me of the texture and complexity of a wine, but it doesn't have the wine flavors so so much. No. But the the the. The texture of it, the complexity of it, it has kind of a, a, an old world wine feel to it. I could I could see where you'd be going there, um, but yeah, I mean for me that the the flavor profile is you know, the way you described it. You know, chocolate, coffee, nut, and a, a creaminess. Um, and there's there's a nice spice on there on the retro hail too for me that, that I think kind of ties it all together. I mean, it's a great smoke. Um, I really enjoyed the the terroir as well, um, and you know it's actually wow. kind of funny. Uh, the band <clears throat> is also a sticker, and it's stuck on my lighter here. I don't know if you guys can see that, because I just know, yeah. We've got a great uh, uh, brick and mortar in uh, Plymouth. A uh, hey, shout out to uh, Plymouth, uh, Michigan. They they with I think we started the the first terroir cigar lounge, the Chen Cellar Terroir Cigar Lounge, and they did it by their local guys that are in the shop and gals that are in the shop. Uh, they crank, uh, came up and took a coffee table. A big coffee table and covered it oh, no. in a mosaic of terroir bands. So we actually had the very first launch of uh, uh, the terroir cigar lounge in Plymouth, Michigan. So if you're up there, you'll see uh, you'll see the people up there. It's wonderful. Love them. Yeah, they actually they're actually in. Uh, we're in this. Uh, Brian and I are in the same neck of the woods. We talked about that before. Um, local shop in Walnut Creek, uh, Casa Bellicoso. Casa, yeah. Has you guys in stock as well. So, uh, if you guys find them at your local shops, you know definitely try them out. If uh, no place near you has them, you can go to the store at cigarfederation.com to pick them up. We're doing, uh, guys, we're doing a, a fire show special. sale, almost <laughs> fire go. sale. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, ninety-eight percent off. No, um, we're doing <laughs> a, a cigar chat show special for the next week, right? Yeah, for the next week. Starting today, the ninth, so it's going to run through uh, next week on the sixteenth. Ten um, percent off. All of uh, Chinook sellers, so you can go. I think we we don't have the uh, estate, but we've got the terroir and the pressoir in there, so uh, you guys can pick those up. Um, that's that's outrage. I can't. I know. Buy now. <laughs> Buy <laughs> <it> now. Buy. <laughs> so okay, so we talked about the blends a little bit. Um, I've got a, a whole. Uh, God, this is a great cigar. Have I've you, got a. Have you ever, I've, have you ever tried this? Is pressoir. This is a great. I'm sorry. Did I interrupt you? I'm sorry. It, no, it, it's a it's a really good cigar. I mean, this is what I'm smoking. I'm trying to think if there's anything that's comparable. If someone hasn't smoked it, uh, something that's something similar. I don't uh, know. Has, 
Oh, so you don't, don't start doing that. We got the fair water. <laughs> hey, that's not a bad, bad blend. It's like mixing red wine and white wine. Oh, that's, that's Yeah, you're right. That's that. <laughs> okay. Yeah, don't, um, don't do that at home. <laughs> Logan, what would you would you compare what would you compare the Pressois to? I mean, what, does it remind you of anything? Of another cigar that maybe somebody Um Nah. No. It's <laughs> that's, like, that's what I wanted. It's no, no, like not really. It's definitely unique. Um, it's different. Yeah. It's it's unique, but it's got it's got a strong profile to it. I I wouldn't yeah, big, call it, it it does. It has a, a big you're right, man. It, it has a big Profile. It's more uh, the the body uh, on the cigar and, uh, is uh, is is huge. I mean, there's a, a big there's a big component of, of uh, flavor. It's just all over the all the palate when you're when you're smoking the cigar. It's like a really fine red wine where you you can actually discern all the different flavors that are coming down. Did I interrupt you again, Rob? I'm sorry. <laughs> no, you're fine. You're fine. It's 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 your product. You know it better than I do. But um, yeah, I'd, no, we're, we're, we're up. Let's do it. Yeah, your turn. Go ahead. Oh, uh, hello everyone. You're listening to Cigar <laughs> Chat on AFRN broadcast around the world on AFRN. I want to thank all the military people who are out there serving, protecting us every day. Thank you for listening in. You can also find us on iTunes under Cigar Federation. This segment is brought to you by myself. I just wanted to thank everyone for just listening. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, check out the store tonight. Um, I don't know if you guys know. If you don't, you're crazy, but we have Goldie's, Legito Number no. Fives, Mr. Sam, and everything La Plea in the store. Check it out. Everybody wants it. Nobody can find it. But guess what? We got it. Bye now. Back to you, Rob. Yeah, those Goldies are limited. Um, they are very I'm, limited. So I don't know how many boxes we have left. And and, and guess where they're made? Where are they, they made? Are made? They are made. El Tony Bronze. Hey, there you go. Exactly. <laughs> so the same. So literally, my roller sits right next to. Uh, Maria that rolls uh, the the Goldie. Oh, okay. There you go. Yeah, it's come and everything that comes out of that factory. Really, I mean the the uh, I mean they've got different profiles, so you're going to find something some that you like and some that you don't like that fits you know your particular flavors. But um, the craftsmanship of things that come out of uh, of Titan to Bronze um, really I and mean, everything is top notch. You, you never I've never had a problem with any of their cigars. So. Cremo. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and Cremo is made there as well. That's the Cremo yeah. Classic. Yeah, uh, boy. I, I dig the Cremo Classic, but we're getting a little off topic. I've got a ton of questions. I haven't even asked. Hey, what are you talking about yet. Cremo? Come on. What? This is Chinook Cellars. <laughs> I haven't even. Well, they're made in the same factory, but I haven't. Uh, we haven't Rapid done any fire, of these Rob. questions here. Rapid um, fire. Punch Nubbit. <laughs> so that's one of my favorite names too. Um, he sent me a question here. He says wants to know: uh, Is your intention to establish long term long term core lines, or do you want to focus more on boutique style lines, limited lines? Uh, yeah, I mean, they'll, they'll always. I will always stay boutique in nature. Uh, it'll always be hard to get. It'll be very limited. I will try to. When I want to make a great cigar, I mean, I'm not going to release something I, I don't love and, and fall in love with. It's going to be something that I have the passion for. Um, we'll start. We're actually already working on a fourth line right now. Uh, it's called Project X plus 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 plus. Plus, yeah. plus, 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 plus. I think that's where we are. Did I, get, did I get that right? Yeah, I think that's where we six are. Six of them? Level yeah. on this one. Uh, we don't have any idea what we're going to call it. It's not going to be a French name. I think we're going to go Italian this time, like uh, wine Italian names or something. But I, we, we haven't even uh, gone to my favorite restaurant and sat down and uh, done a, uh, a, a search for names where we come up with all the names for our scars. Uh, but, yeah, we'll do that. Uh, so what was the question again? I went off on a tangent. No, no, you're 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 answering it. Um, yeah. If okay, so I guess another way to a, to ask this question: of the three blends that you've got, are these all going to be core lines? That are going to be continuously available? Yes. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. none of these these aren't limited. Oh yeah. So these uh, I always say limited on it because I don't know what's going to happen. Uh, sure. But if somebody loves it, uh, we've got a good following for it. It's uh, becomes a main line. Um, we may uh, start. Moving a state out and bringing another line in. I don't want to have more than three lines. So as we launch uh, Project X plus 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 plus, plus uh, we may start folding out uh, the uh, the estate line. Uh, Interesting. I don't know yet. We're 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 still playing with that. I, I just don't want to go too big, too quick. I'm just I want to keep it where I got my hands around it and I got the quality and control and it's not going crazy. Sure. Now, we're already in two factories. You know, in Miami and, and Honduras, and uh, uh, you know, we'll, we'll see what happens. Uh, yeah, I'm, we're, we're still working on it. 
So sure. that's the answer to your question, yes. So, yeah, so I absolutely you... have no idea what I'm going to do. <laughs> I like the, the candid answer. That's good. Um, so, okay, so here's a, a question from Shooter. Shooter. Shooter's Tour. Um, when you work on a blend, do you try to pair it with your wines, or do you use some other, like another method? Is it are these blended in any specific way uh, to to marry well with uh, with a wine pairing? You know, there's 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 great questions, and then there's incredible questions. That's a mediocre question. No. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, who who was that? Who did I just offend out there? I'm, no, my fans, I'm sure. Like one of our favorites, actually. No, actually, she's my no, favorite that's, that's, dude. That when you say when you usually say that you're, you 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 pause so that you can think on that answer, but actually, uh, yeah, that's actually what we did to start out, guys. Um, so yeah, let me pick this one up again. So um, we're exactly right on. So the estate blend that we did originally back five years ago uh, with Willie Herrera back in uh, with uh, El Tate and the Bronze, that's exactly what we did. This cigar was designed to go with a big red wine. That's what we did this for. I wanted, this is what I wanted to launch. Once it, when I started talking about it, I wanted to do a blend that went well with red wines because I wanted to bring some of the technology from the wine industry uh, and the spirit of the wine industry into the cigar industry because that was my background. I wanted to do that. And, uh, uh, you know, at, at the time, nobody really was doing that. Uh, I was trying to, you know, come up first to market and try to do that. Uh, Pete Johnson, if you're out there, I know you're trying to do the same thing in the reverse. <laughs> I know, buddy. But it's all right. Uh, I love you, Pete. Uh, so we, we actually started blending this cigar uh, with Willie to go with Big Red Wines, and that's what we did. So this one has got a lot of spice to it. We found that the spice component was the best thing to go with uh, a Big Red Wine. There was a lot of trials and t uh, we, we did in the, in the factory and different flavor components that were trying just to find the right blend that did it. And I found that a big white pepper spice went very well with a big tannic uh, red wine. So that's you know it's got you know tannin is what makes your mouth kind of dry when you're when you're drinking that red wine. The big tannin makes your kind of your tongue tingle in the back and makes it kind of dry in the back. That's what tannin is. And that that tannic component you find in big red wines. It's actually a component that actually helps the uh, the wines age more. Uh, but it's a natural product of uh, the, the the fermentation of wine when you're we're pressing the cigar or pressing you're pressing the the wine grapes. Uh, the seeds uh, and the skins have tannin in them, and the stems have tannin, in, and it actually uh, brings tannin into the wine, and that's actually a natural preservative. So uh, you don't have to put uh, a lot of SO2 uh, into the wine to preserve it. You can actually naturally do that with uh, big red wines. That's why you know red wines naturally age longer than red wine, or excuse me, than white wines. Uh, white uh, white wines have very little tannin in them because they're on the skins for like an hour, if that, maybe 30 minutes. Red wines are on for three or four weeks, so it's it's a it's a different process. So the the red wines pick up a lot of tannin. That's why they, they have a, a big bold uh, flavor component to them that red wines do not. Uh, I'm a big red wine drinker. I'm I'm not a, a white wine maker. Uh, we only make Merlot and Cabernet and some Cabernet blends. So uh, uh, I, that's where I reason that I to, long story to this uh, a long answer to, this, to the a really great question is that's what we do with uh, with the estate blend. Okay. Um, so shooter, you asked a great question. You redeemed yourself. Love you, shooter. Uh, uh, so okay, this is kind of a follow-up question to that. So I guess this is more of a reference to uh, the pressoir and the ter and the terroir. Uh, oh, so your French, is, your French is not so good looking on you. Yeah, no, it's it's bad no. times. Uh, I never had one lesson. Um, so are, so the 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 two newer blends are they. Are they blended? They're they're not blended to 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 marry with a, a wine, but are they blended towards specific uh, niches in the market, or are they blended towards you know your palate, things that you like to smoke? Because they are very different. Yeah, they are, and so exactly. So the once again, the the estate was blended to go with the bigger red wines. The terroir, I wanted to step out of my wine thing and create a cigar that I loved, that wasn't really focused on wine, but was my palate. And I wanted a wine that had a big creamy, nutty, and a white spice to it. Uh, so that's what terroir is. It starts out a little spicy at the very beginning, goes into this creamy, nutty, buttery, buttery flavor in the middles, and finishes with this this big spice and almost picks up in body uh, at the very end. So I wanted to do something that was totally different. I wanted to take terroir with this elegant metal band, if you haven't seen it yet. Uh, <laughs> did I show you that? Okay. Um, and create a cigar that uh, would take you on a journey. This is this is a cigar that I asked Willie. Said, "Listen, I want to take people on a journey. I don't want to 
uh, per se make this a wine cigar. I want to take them on a ride, a little roller coaster ride, or a sojourn, if you will, a, a ride uh, through flavor profiles. It was very elegant, don't you think? Mm. Uh, but that was the reason I wanted to do this. I wanted to, I wanted to do that something was uh, when you when you first lit it up, uh, you would get this this kind of this white pepper spice for the first three or four puffs, and then all of a sudden it would just change on you to a a uh, really creamy and nutty flavor. And as you're going through it, you go nut, butter, spice, nut, butter, 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 spice, and it would just change all the way down. So every smoke was something unique. And when you got to the end, for those big for those, uh, the guys that really love a you know big full body cigar, the body would pick up at the end. And that was really what we tried to create with uh, with Terroir. Uh, it's a journey. It's a sojourn. So that was did I answer the question? That was the answer. Yeah. So yeah. 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 Uh, so on on press walk, which we're smoking now, and Rob, I'm sure you loving that cigar. Okay. Uh, press walk, we wanted to do something <laughs> totally different. We wanted to press the cigar. Go figure. Okay. And uh, I wanted to create something once again totally unique. Uh, I wanted a box press cigar. One, I wanted a Maduro wrapper. Two, three, I wanted to get creamy, nutty butter, and uh, this one creamy. No, creamy, nutty. Coffee and chocolate, with big chocolate. Um, I just thought this would be a great cigar. Uh, I've tried cigars that had some of those components together. I haven't found one yet that had this flavor of the big chocolate cocoa, coffee latte, creamy coffee flavor to it. So that's what we did with this. Yeah, the <clears throat> the, the way that you, you break down the the pressoir, which I mean I've said it before, is 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 spot on. Um, sorry about my lighting. I'm in a bit of a spotlight here. Um, the, with the, the terroir, I can understand why uh, Dustin says that he loves it so much. It's right up his alley. And uh, I love Dustin, by the way. Dustin, <laughs> I love you, bro. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if Catfish is on right now or not. I don't think he is. He's not. He's, 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 in, he's in grad school, so he's busy, but uh, he gets a pass. Um, oh, is it? Right, easy. Um, okay, is it my turn? Yep. Oh, we're almost, wow, we're almost out of time. I know. Um, what? Let's go another hour. Let's let it roll. Come on. I'm just, getting, I'm just getting the swing of it. Come on. Let's party. We've got a we've got a tight 55 minute time limit. Uh, guys, you're listening to Cigar Chat uh, on CigarFederation.com, uh, broadcast around the world on Armed Forces Radio Network. Thanks for tuning in. We're here with uh, Brian Chinook talking about uh, uh, Pressois, Terroir, the Estate Blend, uh, and Chinook Cellars uh, cigars, Chinook Cellars wine. Um, and this final segment of the show is brought to you by uh, the other new uh, the new brand we've got in the store this week, uh, Casa Fernandez Cigars. We've got uh, also featured in our uh, Cigar of the Month Club. Um, Casa Fernandez, we've got, what do we got in stock? We've got a little bit of everything that they've got. Uh, the, the Reserva, Ag the Maduro. Agonorsa, the, the Miami uh, Reserva Maduro, the Miami, the Arsenio, which I haven't smoked the Arsenio, but I kind of want to do it just get my Arsenio on, you know? Um, Logan, are you, you aren't even old enough to remember Arsenio. I know he was uh, a talk show host before. He was like MC Hammer's cousin, right? Yeah, something like that. I don't know. Okay. Bill, Bill Clinton played uh, saxophone on his show. That was a big deal. Oh, but anyway, um, so yeah, check him out at the store uh, at cigarfederation.com. Uh, okay, so we've got... Uh, Seven, have, six minutes. We've got Okay, we've just got a few minutes left. We've got to do these Wait, giveaways. Make, makeup still have not showed up yet. Makeup and hair have still not shown up yet. <laughs> They must be stuck in traffic. I want, I, I, and the food caterer has still not shown up yet. So I mean, when you're when you're going up 80, and then what do you take? What is that, 32 or 37 or whatever uh, freeway that yeah, is? 30, 12, 12 or 37, yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it gets it can get crazy around you know around four or five o'clock. They're stuck in traffic. Well, uh, the, well, Logan will give them a stern talking to. I appreciate but, that. Uh, so we I picked, we picked one winner already, and we've got two left. Is that right? <laughs> Yeah, Clayton, Clayton Deaton won the uh, – oh, Clayton. Uh, Clayton's from uh, Tennessee, so uh, shout out to my Tennessee buddies. And uh, Clayton, thanks for uh, joining up tonight, man. Yeah, yeah. So he, he won the box, but we've also got two more four five-packs, right? Four. We have – Are you doing five-packs or four-packs, dog? Well, we were doing – we had uh, 20 cigars to work with, so we were going to pick four winners – or five winners. So that's four-packs. So we've got four okay. left. So we have four people to pick. All right. So, so I think we should pick Shooter because we love to. Okay. Shooter's a winner. Shooter, you're in. You always win. Good, good for that you, was, Shooter. Yeah, you, you gave him a hard time, Brian, but that was a pretty good question, I thought. It, the rest it, of the people. It prompted a really good do. answer. So we just email. Oh. No email. Okay, you tell you tell him, Logan. 
first three people to email me at Logan, L-O-G-A-N, at CigarFederation.com, winner. Because right, that works really well. And with your name, address, zip code, blood type, social, and preferably credit card number. There hey. you go. Hey guys, let me do a shout out real quick. I forgot uh, all the guys in uh, Los Gatos at the uh, Los Gatos uh, Cigar Club are actually have had this on live up uh, on the big screen. Oh, and nice! So all my brothers down in uh, Los Gatos tonight, shout out to you. Thanks for uh, thanks for everybody getting on and watching tonight. And across, mm -hmm. I think there's several other cigar shops that are doing the same thing. So everybody, thanks for getting on tonight. For Very sure. cool. Yeah, thanks for tuning in. A lot of uh, California people out there. I appreciate that. You guys are inside, so you're more comfortable and warm than I am. Um, so what do we got, Logan? We got a couple minutes left. Or can I do a couple rapid fire questions here? You do rapid fires, and I'm getting winners. Uh, okay. Um, let me see if I can find one that. Uh... Okay, so as far as okay, so we talked about you know the 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 three different blends. A state you want to pair that one with a big red wine. What right. do you what do you pair the other two with when you're smoking them? Uh, Pressoir. Yeah. Coffee. Okay. I mean, it's, uh, I, I think everybody, I mean, this is this would be a great, I'm not a coffee drinker, but people pick this up and they go, that would go great with coffee. Um, I I would go with a little uh, amaretta with this, mm. get some coffee, or maybe some hot chocolate. This in, this in hot chocolate and amaretta is incredible. I've done, I did this actually in, uh, for uh, for Christmas. I, uh, I did that little, little tasting and uh, it actually was very nice. Huh. Um, so yeah, a little amaretta and uh, picks up that cream and that nutty, uh, and then you get the the, the 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 coffee flavor also brings it out. I tell you what's great also. Um, uh, let's see what's uh, Starbucks. I guess during the season they they have those chocolate covered uh, cocoa beans. You know. Oh yeah. Coffee mm -hmm. beans. You know the, the chocolate. Yeah, like espresso coffee. beans. Yeah, espresso beans. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Dude, those things rock with this. I mean, <laughs> you, pop, you pop one of those things in the mouth, it's like a, uh, can I say sexual, explosion in your mouth. Yeah, there you go. Sensual or sexual, sensual explosion in your mouth. It's uh, <laughs> actually like sexual. Okay. We'll go with it. We'll just go with it. Uh, and what about the terroir? Well, is FCC going to cut us down for that one? Okay. Uh, we're, we're fine. <laughs> we'll go with that. Okay. And, and what about the terroir? What would you pair with terroir, the terroir? Um, <laughs> sorry. There's... Never smoke in a cave. Okay? There's no reason to smoke inside a wine cave. This place is full of smoke right now. That's funny. So I would turn on the blowers, but it would make so much noise you couldn't even hear me. So You'd be blown out. Okay. Never smoke in a cave. If you're a smoker, never smoke. Stay out of the like, caves. Like, like Logan. Never smoke in a garage or wherever you are. Looks like in a garage, right? Yeah, he's in the yeah, no, he's, he's, he's in the, the, the door open. He's, he's in, in the storage the closet. Yeah. Um, so sorry, I didn't mean to do that. But oh, what was the question again? Uh, the terroir. Oh, what do you pair terroir. the terroir? terroir with? Um, I find that goes great with uh, uh, brandies. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Brand any uh, any good uh, any good brandies? Uh, uh, some cognacs. Uh, mm -hmm. Well, with uh, you know maybe a Louis Trey for a buck twenty-five ish uh, shot. Sure. Because <laughs> you know if you're gonna if you're gonna spend a buck twenty-five for a shot of Louis Trey, you're gonna want a pewter metal band to go with. There you it. go. There you go. Lot, so, so when we roll, it's Chinook <laughs> So if you, if you guys come down to Chinook Solar, hey, Rob, you're always welcome. I know you messed me up this time. You didn't show up. I, actually, <laughs> I don't know if you guys know, but I actually asked Rob. He's only 40 minutes away. I asked him to come down, visit me in the cave. Let's do the show live. No, he's too busy to show up. And it was, now he's yeah, it, was, it ended up being, it ended up being me, a tough day. Smoking, drinking wine, you know, having a great time. But oh, We would have oh. smoked ourselves out of that cave, I think, yeah. <laughs> if we had both of us going. Mm. Uh, so just nobody cares what, what my preferences are, but I've smoked the, the terroir and the pressoir. For the terroir, I would go with a nice creamed coffee. Wouldn't sweeten it. Creamed coffee with the terroir. Pressoir, a nice bourbon with just a, like a maybe maybe a lighter bourbon, almost like a Basil Hayden, something like that. Not too strong, but a nice little flavor. I think those would be great pairings. That's just my opinion. Um, I think we're – Logan, is that about it? We're just about out of time. No. I got, I got winners. All okay, right. you got the winners. Okay, announce. Let's announce the winners. All right, winners and the winners. <laughs> Sam Friedrich, Tyler Albright, and you're a jerk for talking crap on me today on Twitter. Don't you think I didn't see it, Tyler? And <laughs> Jason Fletcher. That's Fletch. Me. All right. Yeah, Fletch. And just because I love your name, Jesus Castillo, aka Jesus, winner. <laughs> 
Winners. All right. All there right. you go. We'll you guys get, are gonna uh, enjoy Pressois. So look forward. Yeah, to no, it's you guys. You guys are gonna enjoy it. So, uh, Brian, we got just a few seconds. Uh, let everybody know how they can find you guys. I mean, if they can find you online, your website, all that stuff. Absolutely. So, uh, yeah, ChinookSellersCigars.com. So it's C H I N N O C K uh, Sellers with a plural, and then Cigars plural dot com. Uh, or just actually, you just go into Google and put Chinook. You're gonna get Chinook Sellers or Chinook Sellers uh, Cigars right away. It'll be the first. Actually, you put Chinook in there, you'll get Chinook Sellers Cigars right at the top, and it comes up instantly. So C H I N N O C K. If you don't know what it looks like, here we go. One more time, Chinook. Sellers, cigars. This is the box. This is terroir. Look for terroir in your your local brick and mortar. That's the inside the label. Looks like that on the outside. That's a nice presentation. A nice little ten pack box. Here's uh, pressoir right here, and the uh, the box on the outside. Beautiful gold labeling on the box. That's pressoir. So look for that in your brick and mortar. Um, please go out and support the local brick and mortars because they uh, they make it happen. And I've got a one, wonderful good shop. You can get on my website. You can actually uh, see the the stores that are carrying uh, my line. And oh, great! I, I get on and, and look at this. There's actually a beautiful map. You can just pick on your state, and it'll pop up uh, and give you the location where they are. Uh, throughout the world, we're actually international. We went international. We actually got into New Zealand. Well, well, no, we actually got into Canada. So I'm, oh, okay, there you go. Yeah, I'm really oh, almost yeah. like uh, yeah, we uh, we we broadened out and uh, we got into Canada. So I'm I'm really uh, I mean I'm stoked. Is that a word? <laughs> yes, I'm yeah. stoked. That's and you used it correctly. I, I, oh, okay. Well, okay, well played. I don't know what it means, but I, I'm stoked. <laughs> I, I just know I'm stoked. And I would I would show you my tattoos because you know Pete Johnson would would do this right. He'd be like you know he'd be sitting back here and have all this. He'd be all toked up, you know, he'd be like tatted up and. I don't have a tattoo, so I don't have anything to show you. Oh well, that's. I, I was getting kind of worried when you stood up, yeah. to be honest. I have a, I have a, but, I have a butterfly, but I can't talk. But about I can't it. tell you where. <laughs> it, was a, it was a bad night, and uh, I don't know where I was. I was <laughs> that's too funny. Uh, so yeah, so go check them out, Chinook Sellers. Um, uh, it's C H I N N O C K. Uh, you can find them, uh, find their website. See if they've got a, a retailer in your area. Uh, if there's nobody, I mean, if they're in your area, support your brick and mortars. You know, always that's that's our deal, that's our slogan here. But uh, if you can't find them in your brick and mortars, you can get them from us. Store.cigarfederation.com, uh, 10% off for the next week. So um, yep. be sure to check that out. Um, thanks for uh, checking out the show. We appreciate it. You can always find us cigarfederation.com. Um, at Robbie Raz on Twitter. Logan is at Logan at Dell. Corporate Monkey on Twitter. Monkey. Um, and let's see, what do we got next week? We're coming back with. We have Espinoza next week. No, uh, you're not having him on, are you? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Eric is a friend of the show. We like Eric. Eric, I love you. Bro, I love you. If you're watching, I love Eric. He's, he's my bro. I'm telling you. I love Eric. He's a, he's a great – and great cigars, by the way. Yeah, they make some good stuff. Cool. So we'll be back uh, next Thursday, guys. Thanks for everything. Brian, thanks for taking the time, buddy. And I will definitely come up there, and we'll uh, we'll have a cigar in your cave. You're always welcome, my friend. Logan, yeah. if you're in the area, my friend, come on up. Doubtful, <laughs> but maybe. <laughs> well, Logan doesn't know. Logan goes to India – and that's it. He doesn't go anywhere else. India Except and and Vegas for the show. That's it. So we'll see you at the show for sure. <laughs> All right. Well, yeah, good. Yeah, we'll see you at the show. But I'll see you before then. I mean, my right. wife and I get up to Napa a lot. So uh, we'll come check you out. Guys, thanks for all the support. We appreciate it. Uh, have a great weekend. And, again, Happy New Year. Later, people. Ciao.